Today is a day we mourn and are dread for the actual day we mourn, because we still have over a year until this takes place, but it's still not happy news and a very bitter pill to swallow for a lot of Nintendo fans. Yesterday, if you missed it, Nintendo dropped the inevitable but unfortunate news of the Nintendo eShop for the Wii U and 3S to be shutting down in March of 2023. Next year's spring is when the support for the eShop and the vast library of games for those systems, old and new for those systems, will be gone. You cannot digitally buy those games anymore. They threw in two different links regarding the matter, one on the specifics and details pertaining to the discontinuation of the service, and the other giving a general graph and visual of some of your own personal most played games, and you have the option to display your most memorable games for both. On the specifics of the entire matter, once again, in late March of 2023, you'll be unable to purchase anything from the eShop on Wii U and 3DS, including free content such as game demos and whatnot, to add to this, on May 22nd of this year, 2022, you'll be unable to use your credit card to add funds to your wallet to make purchases for these systems, and by August 29th of this year as well, you'll be unable to use Nintendo eShop cards to add funds to your account on these systems. It'll still be possible to redeem download codes, but yeah, the ability to add funds to your account will gradually become a lot harder to do the closer we get to summer this year. The Wii U and 3DS have this Nintendo Network ID where your wallet funds are, and you've had the ability to link it with your Nintendo account wallet, the one for Switch, so if you have both of those linked, you can still add funds that way and use the shared funds across the two to buy eShop games on Wii U and 3DS until the service shuts down next spring. After that, you'll only be able to use the funds for the Switch eShop, and there are no plans to change the Switch's eShop. That much was a given and an obvious guess. This discontinuation will take effect on games where you can purchase stuff like Street Pass, Nintendo Badge Arcade, etc likely any game with DLC. At the very least, after March of 2023, you'll still be able to re-download software and DLC if you already bought it. You get software updates and you could still play online on 3DS and Wii U titles. So at the very least, that's still salvaged. And there's a Q&A section at the bottom where most of the stuff I went over is stuff a lot of people could probably guess and know about that Nintendo basically outlined again to get the point across. They reason how this is being done because this is the natural life cycle of consoles as they get less used by consumers over time. They're announcing this now to give people a year in advance as notice to prepare. There aren't any plans to change other services and functions to the Wii U and 3DS, the biggest one being online play. You'll still be able to re-download previously owned software and DLC, free software updates, and play online in the foreseeable future. Eshop cards you find in stores that are marketed specifically as Wii U and 3DS eShop cards can still be usable while supplies last. You can still add funds from those same cards to your Nintendo account on Switch. And as far as what can be done after late March of 2023, you'll for the last time as the Q&A states, re-download software you owned at one point and existing free software updates. You will not be able to purchase content, pay DLC, plays and passes in software like Street Pass and Pokemon Bank. You won't be able to download demos, free to start software, redeem download codes, or add funds to the eShop balance. You'll be able to download a small number of free themes on 3DS, and in the case of Pokemon Bank, it's been officially confirmed that Pokemon Bank will become a free-to-use service once the eShop closes. You won't be able to download it once the eShop closes, while you can still download it within the next year and after the eShop closes. There's confirmation that the service will still continue and will probably shut down whenever Pokemon Company or Game Freak feel like it. I'm not sure which company is in charge of that service in particular. So at least Pokemon fans have a longer window to still move Pokemon across games and systems, but beyond that, yeah, this is all the information regarding the discontinuation of the 3DS and Wii U eShop. Minus, <laughs> minus one particular bullet point that Nintendo removed a little while after they announced this. There was this question pertaining to the classic content being removed and how a ton of games will be gone and unavailable for purchase, asking if those classic games will be purchasable anywhere else, if not, then why, and doesn't Nintendo have any obligation to preserve its classic games by making them continually available for purchase? Nintendo answers this specific question with bullets, directing the viewer to Nintendo Switch's online service, how there's over 130 games on there and there are enhanced features to some of those titles like online play, they believe this is an effective way to make classic content easily available to players, and new and old players will not only find plenty of older titles they enjoyed back in the day, but may stumble across other titles they may enjoy but haven't heard of or seen before, and they have no other plans to offer the classic content in other ways. <sighs> oh boy, we're putting a pin on this one for later. We're gonna talk about this specific bullet point later, you already know what the problem is here, but yeah. 
my take on most of this matter. This was kind of imminent for a while now. Several months ago, some territories around the world, they already limited some payment distribution methods already, like being unable to use your credit card to add funds. I forget which territories in particular, but my point was the writing was kind of on the wall for several months now. And this is indeed something that I feel was inevitable. Consoles die, services die, some creators and Nintendo fans, including me, make it a point that these kinds of things are things that do disappear and things Nintendo and other companies will do. They did it with the Wii Shop channel, and this eShop discontinuation has lasted for about the same length as the Wii Shop channel did. So I'm not saying this is surprising to any degree, any high degree at the very least, but this is still a melancholy and bitter pill to swallow. At least they're giving us an entire year to prepare beforehand, see what games we could salvage and buy before we can't, and I'm glad they're still keeping online play up for a while longer. Games like Mario Kart 7 and 8, Splatoon 1, Smash for 3DS and Wii U, Kid Icarus Uprising, etc. will still have online functionality for a little while longer, and most of these games still have active online communities, believe it or not. But this is still effectively spelling the end of an era. Beyond the online play, which will still continue for a little bit, this basically ceases production of all things 3DS and Wii U. Physical production of these games and their games ended a good while ago, going into the Switch obviously. But losing digital access always was that one spare safe haven to still get some of these games. And we're gonna lose that spring of 2023. Again, inevitable for sure, but still valid and worth mourning and feeling bad about this. Like thousands of people are legitimately upset about this for various reasons, one of them being again, that end of an era. Plenty of people, including me, stuck out the 3DS and Wii U era. Even if the Wii U sold miserably, there were still those like me who got it, held out through most of it, and it just makes you, at least me right now, reflect on the times I spent playing both. The memories page they linked, I'll just post mine here right now I guess, I spent so much time on that little handheld since middle school. I'm shocked at how much time I sunk into Ocarina of Time 3D, being my first ever delve into the Zelda series, but that game really was a great game and a great remake. Played so much of that. Played a lot of Mario 3D Land back in middle school, almost all the Pokemon games on 3DS, minus Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Mario Kart 7, Smash 3DS, Mario and Luigi Dream Team and Paper Jam, and of course, Kid Icarus Uprising. You guys know I'll always preach and speak high praise for how good of a game Kid Icarus Uprising is. And if you have not get it yet, you have another year, please, if you haven't gotten yet, this is your last chance to like reasonably buy Kid Icarus Uprising. Get it, please. And that game, along with the others I listed, there were some fond memories and times I had playing these games and systems. Same for the Wii U, albeit a much smaller library. Tons of hours in Smash, Mario Kart 8, hilariously enough, Paper Mario Color Splash is my third most played game on Wii U. I think that alone speaks for how many Wii U games I played and bought more than anything. I thankfully have other games I either have not beaten or didn't even start though for both 3DS and Wii U. Zelda's Majora's Mask 3D, Wind Waker HD, Twilight Princess HD, Metroid Samus Returns, Fusion and Zero Mission, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, Fire Emblem Awakening, Splatoon, Xenoblade Chronicles X, etc. So I have a decent library of games I'll still keep and have access to when this goes away, but it is still a little melancholy I feel. And it's also sad and bittersweet because... It's really the end of two eras, one era in the 3DS and Wii U, Nintendo's previous generation of hardware and software, but also the definitive final end, the final nail in the coffin for Virtual Console. The Virtual Console, the service slash program slash means of Nintendo adding the older titles to newer hardware for newer generations of gamers to buy an experience. It started on the Wii, expanded tenfold on Wii U, and even the 3DS, and will effectively disappear in a year's time. And that is the biggest bummer everyone has over this. Their method and rate of distributing those classic titles is definitely debatable when Virtual Console was a thing. And obviously Nintendo was mentioned and showed early on with the Switch they wanted to abandon the Virtual Console brand for the subscription based model instead. Again, nothing about any of this is shocking or a major revelation than it is a woeful melancholy reality we were gonna have to deal with at some point. But come the end of the Wii U and 3DS, their Virtual Console library was actually insane. You had a wide array of NES, SNES, and N64 games in there, but between both systems you had a bunch of Game Boy games, and Game Boy Color games, Game Boy Advance, even DS and Wii games on the Wii U's Virtual Console, and there was a bunch across every single system's library. Essentially every major first party title on all those systems, some third parties, 
definitely some shovelware, but just a vast library of classic games you could easily access and play at any time for a reasonable price. That was one of the few biggest saving graces of the Wii U. That classic library you could buy for like 3 to 15 bucks a piece depending on the game, and it never got to see its full potential realized or fully appreciated because the Wii U sold miserably a literal fraction of the Switch's current install and consumer base now, but it is still definitely a bummer. Everyone genuinely loved the Virtual Console and is definitely the hardest part of the pill to swallow here. Even long after Nintendo's confirmed, they abandoned that model. That's not even mentioning digital-only hardware you can only get on the 3DS and Wii U specific to those systems only, or the DSi hardware only obtainable on the 3DS since the 3DS continued that as well. Now with this, both physical releases of the games on these systems, as well as the systems themselves being sold with these older and newer games on these systems digitally, are going to become harder to find find and skyrocket in price, making them harder to access, buy, or not be scalped. It just makes the preservation and act of seeking these older titles harder to do after next spring. For as many people that just play newer games and new titles, there's literally about as many people who either buy those new systems, older systems, and or download emulators and play those older titles and previous gen software. I'll use this as my springboard into the questionable response. This entire thing was very likely and bound to happen at some point. I've said this like four or five times now just to get my point across, because there's always that one or two comment out of every dozen that does not pay attention to any nuance, context, or subtext I put out there in some of these discussion videos that I make and mention something they don't like that I or others don't like regardless of any valid or understandable reasoning or don't like when I don't mention something when I flat out do, sometimes more than once, this is an inevitable thing that was gonna happen that will inevitably make people upset one way or another no matter how much people want to make fun of that or act like they shouldn't. But I think mine and most people's problem with this discontinuation is this wouldn't be as bitter of a pill to swallow if Nintendo wasn't this insanely backwards about their entire game preservation, emulation, piracy debacle. I've mentioned and complained and criticized and bitched this exact thing in my Nintendo Switch Online video going on about how it's not worth $50 for all these reasons, but again, this discontinuation further supports my point and the entire disapproval many have with Nintendo's approach to legacy content and their vilification of piracy and emulation while not doing anything to rectify that. Like, I understand and agree with the idea of piracy being illegal. Games they sell, like Breath of the Wild or Mario Odyssey, to where people choose not to buy and download a ROM of a game up on some site where the whole piracy problem and illegality surrounding it comes into play. The illegality surrounding piracy is the illegal distribution surrounding ROMs of those titles. That much I understand and agree with, I get it. Especially and primarily if we're talking current gen hardware and software being sold. But it's not something I'm going to lose sleep over if, say, one of you guys watching it does that. From me to you, the viewer, from this creator to you, the viewer watching, I don't care what you do regarding either pirating games or emulating them. I have Dolphin and Project 64 pinned to my taskbar on my computer. That should tell you more than enough, let alone the fact I'm a gaming YouTuber that plays Nintendo games because a lot of Nintendo and non-Nintendo YouTubers do the exact same thing. But one of my issues with Nintendo regarding their whole stance on piracy is they also put emulation under the same umbrella, which in of itself is not illegal. If you legally purchased a copy of a game, you have the right to back up said game onto a hard drive or PC and boot up that backup on an emulator. It's your copy of the game, it's within your right to modify and play the game under different settings, enhancements, modifications, etc. since you own it. That is within the legality surrounding emulation. The only aspect of either that makes it illegal is once again, finding ROMs of these games and downloading them for free online, or the monetary gain of selling these ROMs and emulators. But beyond simply wanting to play these older games, emulation is legit the only and ever increasing popular way in preserving these very old titles as well. And this leads into another key problem I have that essentially everyone else has with Nintendo since the Switch started. That's the core issue with this discontinuation. They literally do nothing about their current services to fix the piracy problem. They'll preach continuously that it plagues them and is a heavy immoral act as it is illegal. Legit, Nintendo's that one company that will always complain about piracy and tell their consumers and fans how bad it is alongside how bad emulation is 
yet they'll do nothing to make their services rival the pirates and emulators. They're putting the final nail in the Virtual Console's coffin, while also telling their fans to not pirate or emulate their games, and I'm sorry, but Nintendo's playing the fool here, especially when 100% directly acknowledging the idea that people would ask and be afraid of their massive console library being gone, not giving us legal accessibility to a large amount of Nintendo's history, and they'll pray and ask their consumers to not pirate or emulate their games? Like, the problem is not only is the vast gaming landscape and other companies acknowledging and understanding they have to provide some adequate services to combat piracy alongside providing or emulating these older games in a considerable and satisfying manner, but Nintendo in particular is literally giving their consumers no other option at this point. I've said all these exact same talking points in that NSO video. You have around 130 games across NES, SNES, and N64 and Genesis on Nintendo Switch Online and some extras in and outside the expansion pass, but with the discontinuation of the 3DS and Wii U eShop, for most people out there, whether or not they have a 3DS or Wii U, you can bet most don't have a Wii U. Beyond that solid number of NES and SNES games and the smaller number of N64 games we have now, the numerous other NES, SNES, and especially N64 games missing from NSO, you can't buy anymore. You can't buy Game Boy games, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games. You can't buy DS games. You can't buy Wii games. You already couldn't buy GameCube games. You can't buy 3DS games, and you can't buy Wii U games anymore. Your only way to buy or play any of these libraries in a legal way is finding retro-esque game stores or sellers and scalpers online selling either individual games across all these systems or individual consoles with even just one or two of these classic or digital-only games digitally for exorbitant prices that almost no one can afford or to pirate and emulate them. Nine times out of ten, your only option is to pirate them. Like, come on now. They're literally playing so much ignorance and even arrogance in acknowledging people want their older games preserved. They do such a bare minimum in doing so, which even then isn't permanent or a long-lasting solution given the significantly smaller library NSO has, and that's another service that could die in the future. They either refuse to add more of what their consumers and fans want to their legacy content that would benefit Nintendo in the long haul, and they outright removed this specific bullet point of the Q&A. Like, it's already hard to somehow pretend game preservation's bad, it's not at all, but they 100% know that dozens of millions of fans want more of those N64 games, GameCube, Game Boy, DS, and Wii games on the Switch through NSO, through Virtual Console, through some means of preserving their legacy content in a way that makes sense. That isn't slow drip feed a game per month, and their subscription model of NSO makes a lot of sense and why it even exists. There's a reason a lot of subscription services in the entertainment medium, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, etc., are taking over and phasing out cable and normal TV networks. Game companies are adopting the same thing, PlayStation with PlayStation Plus, Microsoft with Game Pass. It is a, definitely 100% a way that makes it more easily accessible for your average player to find more games, and beneficial as far as revisiting older classics and discovering new titles you might not have even heard of before, as Nintendo described it. But not only did the Virtual Console model manage to do the latter still, the point of piracy being a problem is it's usually 9 times out of 10 a service problem. The service not being adequate enough or worth the purchase for numerous reasons, so they go to the pirates that offer a better service. These free games instead of overly priced consoles and games secondhand that Nintendo's not selling anymore, and to an emulator that can run these unobtainable games. There are companies, development teams, and gaming enthusiasts in the vast video game landscape that both understand the appeal, benefits, and popularity surrounding emulation as well as where the problem lies with piracy and how to combat it. I've already given my pieces on NSO at least two and a half times at this point, but the one constant near universally agreed upon problem with Nintendo since NSO is their legacy content approach and content distribution rate has been very lackluster, with the rate in particular being more lackluster than it ever was during the Wii and 3DS slash Wii U. Almost five years into the Switch, and now we're getting N64 games. Like, you can't just ask and hope your consumers don't pirate your older software while turning cheek to even fixing that. It's the textbook definition of willful ignorance, and even then, emulation in of itself is a means of both game preservation and simple gaming that is both legal and constantly improving and getting more popular. Mods, better graphics, optimization on a lot of popular older titles, 
Citra and Simu, the emulators for 3DS and Wii U. I have no idea if I pronounced those right, so I apologize if I failed. They're going to skyrocket in popularity as a result of this. And hacking and modifying these consoles as well for those who bought these systems is effectively their only means of playing any of these games again, if not just emulating and pirating them on their PC. Sony almost nixed the PlayStation Network a while ago on PlayStation 3 for about the same reasons as Nintendo's doing it with the 3DS and Wii U eShop, but there was such a large amount of backlash, both in part, that a lot of people still played the PS3, and there's a lot of games on PS3 you simply can't buy or play on a PS4 or PS5, that they backpedaled and decided to keep it because people still want to play and preserve these games. You can't count on gaming companies to preserve older titles most of the time after a certain period, and your legitimate only option as a result is emulation and piracy. And because of everything I just described, it indifferences the morality surrounding emulation and piracy for a lot of people more and more over time because Nintendo keeps doing stuff like this. I've also mentioned this in the NSO video. Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, Sega, EA, Activision, like no company is your friend or family. They are a corporation, they are a business, they want your money, they're not your friends. They've done anti-consumer stuff before, all of them. I'm not just, it's not just Nintendo, literally all of them, they're not your friends. But they're not selling the vast majority of their classic library come next spring. Even when you get the older systems offhand and like older games, they will die at some point and become unplayable. So a large chunk of their history, systems, and games can only be preserved through emulation. And if Nintendo's not selling a large chunk, the vast majority of their older history with this, forget the Wii U sold miserably so it's not even like the majority of these libraries will be salvaged by a lot of people out there, maybe on 3DS? They're not losing any money if some random Joe downloads an illegal ROM of Kirby Air Ride, Kid Icarus Uprising, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Paper Mario TTYD, Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2, etc., and emulates it. Nintendo has to understand if they want less people to pirate their games, if they want to nix piracy by some considerable margin, if the company slash corporation really believes it to be as immorally bad and heinous as any other crime, many of which a thousand percent can argue for even worse and immoral wrong and actions taking place, either add more legacy content to their current subscription model or just make more of your classic library accessible in some way, even if just random individual releases on the Switch eShop. I think I got my point across at this point. The eShop on 3DS and Wii U going away, it's a sad time for many and worthwhile in mourning, especially for those who went through the 3DS and Wii U era, but it's serving as another example of Nintendo being backwards as ever with their stance, approach, and reasoning behind piracy, emulation, their legacy content, their legacy content distribution rate, etc. It's annoying as always, I'm probably gonna get some backlash for even explaining where or why there are faults in this, and Nintendo's whole thing with legacy content, it's par for the course at this point. Even when I praise their games and development teams, you can't criticize their business and marketing stances and decisions. Someone will probably think is a thing we have to do, which isn't true, nor does it make sense. You can do both. I don't get it. It's weird. I at least appreciate you taking the time to watch this video at all. Hope you're safe. Have a great week. I'll see you all in another discussion video, whether on Nintendo or some Nintendo game. Stay super. Yo! Hey! Men! Hey! What are ya? Yes, yes.